Try not to sound like an AMD fanboy. Try not to sound like an AMD fanboy. Try not to sound like an AMD fanboy. AMD began 2020 on a high note. You recall Ryzen 4000 Mobile at CES 2020. And judging by the news we've just heard about Zen 3 and Ryzen 5000 on the desktop, it suggests AMD is going to finish 2020 on an even higher note. The recent news from AMD is about the Zen 3 architecture, along with details of four Ryzen 5000 CPUs. AMD skipping Ryzen 4000 for the desktop, so going from Ryzen 3000 to Ryzen 5000. We have to assume the mobile parts will catch up with the 5000 naming when they in turn move to Zen 3 architecture. In many respects Zen 3 looks like a refinement of Zen, Zen Plus and Zen 2. However AMD assures us that Zen 3 is a completely new architecture. It certainly has significant changes but whether it is a new architecture is a bit of a moot point. Nonetheless, AMD is claiming a massive 19% increase in IPC instructions per clock. The most obvious change inside Zen 3 is it now has an 8-core complex with 32 megabytes of shared L3 cache, which reduces latency over the previous setup of two 4-core complexes, each with their own L3 cache. Ryzen 5000 CPUs on the desktop will continue to use 7 nanometer from TSMC. It will continue to use the AM4 socket. And at the moment we understand DDR4 3600 megahertz is about as fast as you want to go on the memory. On paper this looks very similar to the processors we've seen over the past few years from AMD. And Ryzen 5000 will indeed be a drop in replacement on your 500 series motherboard typically x570 once you've upgraded to a buyer with a GISA 1.1.0.0. We're also told that support for Zen 3 will appear on 400 series motherboards i.e. the ones that were for the Ryzen 2000 processors. That support is due to appear early next year. That's very good news. What we're seeing at the moment is that Zen 3 claims to improve boost clocks, but all core clock speeds, they look very similar. It wouldn't surprise me in the slightest if a new Ryzen 5000 fails to beat a Ryzen 3000 with a similar core count at, for example, Cinebench. If clock speeds are the same and core count is the same, you'd expect the test results to be the same. It'll be a different story in single core performance, but in multi-core performance it would not, as I say, shock me if Ryzen 5000 pretty much matches Ryzen 3000 in CPU specific tests. One item of news that did come as a complete surprise is that in the first instance AMD has announced four models of Ryzen 5000 and all four of these models will be available on the 5th of November. We were expecting two, possibly three early in November and then perhaps the 16 core at the turn of the year. AMD has pulled the rug from under our feet with this one. AMD has also made it clear they're jacking up their selling prices. Indeed, if you look closely, you'll see the prices are going up by more than the obvious $50 as they're maintaining their position of not supplying coolers with these parts, with the exception of Ryzen 5 5600X. The 8, 12 and 16 core parts, they don't ship with a cooler anymore. That's fair enough. Most people who are buying those processors want to put a big beefy cooler on rather than the relatively weedy cooler that AMD was supplying. Nonetheless, it's handy to have a cooler that you can strap on just to check your system works before you upgrade your cooling. And that cooler has to be worth $30, $40. So AMD is moving pricing forward quite significantly with the new Ryzen 5000 parts. The thing with Zen 3 is that it is much more efficient than Intel can muster with Skylake. Power consumption is a fraction of Intel's and AMD is happy to report they can do much more work with the same amount of power. They're crowing from the rooftops about this and justifiably so. Perhaps the biggest part of AMD's news announcement about Ryzen 5000 and Zen 3 they are now claiming they can beat Intel at 1080p gaming. That is a bold claim. Judging by the figures that AMD posted, their claims look entirely reasonable. And that is a big step forward for Team Red. Following on from desktop Ryzen 5000, we have to assume that Zen 3 will next appear in Epic. This is going to be called Milan. If we follow on the thinking from the desktop parts, Milan, we assume, will stick with up to 64 cores per processor. 
which obviously crushes Intel at present. We also have to wonder whether the reduction in latency in Zen 3 is going to help the server parts more than they help the desktop parts. There are far more core complexes inside Epic than there are inside the desktop part. A reduction in latency, you have to think, is going to have a big difference with Epic. It should go without saying that we're looking forward to seeing Zen 3 Threadripper just as soon as we possibly can. But just so there's no doubt, we're looking forward to seeing Zen 3 Threadripper just as soon as possible. And we assume it'll be a drop-in replacement on TRX-40. It's crystal clear to us that Intel knows they don't have a leg to stand on against Zen 3. The way they've been stuck on 14 nanometer for so long, completely incapable of moving to 10 nanometer, is a story we've told a number of times now over the past couple of years. And the, <laughs> the giveaway here is that Intel released a blog post the day before the AMD announcement. A blog post, not products, just a little snippet on Medium. And in that blog, Intel talked a little bit about gaming and then confirmed they are moving 11th gen Rocket Lake back to the very end of March 2021. That's four or five months after the date we're expecting to see it. We don't have any particular hopes for Rocket Lake, you have to understand that, but Rocket Lake is due to introduce PCI Express Gen 4 on the Intel desktop, which is going to be significant after all. Modern graphics now support Gen 4, and Intel in that respect will be catching up. But the fact that Rocket Lake is expected to go up to eight cores sounds like a curious backward step. Intel's talking about an architecture change inside Rocket Lake, or rather there are rumors to that effect. But pushing Rocket Lake back to the first quarter of next year, the end of the first quarter of next year, that cannot be good news. So for the time being, it looks like AMD all the way. While we're piling on the bad news, uh, we understand that Intel high-end desktop is going to be stuck with X299 for months to come because 14 nanometer. Until we've seen 10 nanometer in play, Intel cannot move beyond 18 cores, and that's just hurting them very badly when they're looking at Threadripper as a comparison. The thing is, we haven't yet seen Intel Ice Lake SP. And you'd have to think that judging by our recent preview of Tiger Lake, a quad-core mobile part, Ice Lake SP is not the part we want to see. We want to see what comes after Ice Lake SP. So for high-end desktop, if Intel continues high-end desktop, we might be looking a year, possibly two years up the road before we see a change in this department. Intel essentially is dead at high-end desktop at the moment. It's Threadripper all the way. If we're going to come up with yet more bad news, When's the Aurora supercomputer going to ship? And how are things going with Intel's 7 nanometer Ponte Vecchio graphics? It's gone very quiet on that front. While that sounds like a litany of terrible news for Intel and great news for AMD, the fact of the matter is that Intel Core i7 at 10700K and Core i9 10900K are selling at very sensible prices. They're selling at sensible prices compared to Ryzen 3000 today and very reasonable prices compared to Ryzen 5000, which are after all due in only a very few weeks time. And the fact is those Intel desktop parts are not bad for gamers. They're actually very good. You can say what you like about Zen 3, but you cannot claim that AMD is going to be selling those parts at discount anytime soon. That just is not going to happen. The irony here is rich beyond measure. If you want the most powerful server or the most powerful workstation or a laptop with all day battery, you want to be shopping with AMD. If you want a value gaming PC, you need to take a very careful look at Intel Core i7. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you head over to kitguru.net to read our news and reviews. I'm Leo Waldock, and this was Leo Says.